Franklin uh, call this this meeting to our regular session to to order and ask everyone to join us in a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. The roll, please. Belke. Here. Belzac. Here. Kenny. Here. Marquez. Here. McIver. Here. Shower. Here. Seifert. Here. Seven present. We have a quorum. The next item on the agenda is a question, comments, and announcement of a general nature for the audience. Uh, well, first we'll start with the, uh, we'll, we'll open it to the audience. Uh, if you have any questions or comments you'd like to make to the City Council, it doesn't have to be on items that are on the agenda this evening but items that you are uh, have a question about, please come forward and, and use the microphone. Come on forward. I think you might have to pull that microphone down for you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Alita Pecknick, and I live at 609 72nd Street, Deering. And I wanted to just uh, make some comments uh, on the... Uh, the clock tower that you're going to be discussing, and, and I'm sure Dan's going to be talking further. Um, for many, many uh, years, I've been going by uh, LaGrange, and they have a tower clock right on the corner, and um, it's a beautification type uh, thing. When, when you come into LaGrange, you notice that, and yes, maybe at that time when they put it up, it was unnecessary, but it certainly catches your eye and gives a distinction to that township along with, with a beautification. And uh, uh, I have to agree that we've been always looking at infrastructure and maybe it's time to look at the beautification. Uh, I think on that corner, the, uh, the clock being there will give daring distinction and it will, you know, a nice place to live for Deering. Finally, it's it's something that will beautify uh, Deering. Um, I think it's a good thing, and I know that you, the council has always been very um, um, just um, good with how they spend our money, very frugal. But, you know, like, like Joe said, maybe it's time to do something so that Deering stands out. I would say with the sign, the chase sign, with all the um, uh, different uh, um, shops that will go in is a good thing, but I don't particularly like it in front of the clock because it kind of looks like Chase is paying for that clock. Um, it's a good idea to have direction into what stores are there, but maybe in a different location. And I certainly on this clock would like somewhere where it says Darien Point or whatever, and I'm sure that's in, in the works. But I think it would add a lot to that corner, and it will, people will notice it. Thank you. Thanks, Arlena. My name is Steve Tardy. Um, my wife is Teresa. Her and I are here tonight on part three of our variance for our patio. So I don't know if it's on the agenda or do I? It's, it is on the agenda. I think okay. there's sheets, uh, Mr. Tardy, there's sheets on the row ahead of you. It is under our consent agenda. Yes. Ironically, I, I know exactly where the clock tower that she's talking about. I'm sure many of you have seen it. And ironically, it's, it's, it's at an intersection similar to ours where, where you have uh, Plainfield and 55th Street intersecting which isn't too far away from our situation here in Darien so I thought that was a unique comparison let's move on to the approval of minutes of July 21st uh, do I have a motion to approve Alderman Seifert seconded by Alderman Kenny any addition or deletions for the clerk then the roll please Seifert aye Kenny aye Belke? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Marquez? Aye. McIver? Aye. Shower? Abstain. The abstention goes with the um, approval. The minutes have been approved. 
Uh, let's move to receiving um, communications. And I believe, I, I noticed that Alderman uh, Kenny noted uh, a business who had, in, our, in these minutes that we just approved, who told you about the ease with which uh, it is to work with the City of Darien. I think we just received another one, uh, Dan, yeah. didn't we? What was the business that said what, what a great city to work with? Uh, this is from, uh, that one was from Joe Huron, uh, who's uh, John Mantle's representative right. for That's the right. Brookhaven Plaza. And there, there's something, there's, again, good stuff happening Oh, that was there. the Work Anytime uh, That was the Work Anytime, yeah. but he's their exclusive broker. Yeah. Uh, so he provided some nice comments okay. to us, too. It's always nice to hear those, those stories. Uh, other communications? Alderman Belke? Yes, I received communication from two residents on 71st Street, one at 414 and one at 410. And this has to do with, uh, we're revisiting the parking situation for the farmer's market. And last week what happened is there was some no parking signs along 71st Street, but then... Um, on the north side. And then they were, yes, on the mm -hmm. north side, and then they were taken away. So some residents are confused of, of what's going on and and who authorized that and how, how that's working. Unfortunately, Alderman, nobody authorized it. Uh, one of the, the enterprising officers of the de police department uh, took it upon himself to come up with a resolution and thought that should be the resolution. And we had him take those down and admonished him that that was not, in fact, an, an appropriate solution. So that's why that didn't occur again this past Wednesday. Okay, and we still have issues with that that we need to discuss. Um, my question, and we could circle back to this because it's a kind of a longer discussion, but um, how does the park district stand on this? Um, Do you know in, how in, in terms of with in, how it's working, how it's not working? Well, the, the one thing that, that I can speak to is the fact that the, the week that those signs were out, the signs were placed on the north side of the street all the way to Bentley. And uh, we got complaints from the park district, the, the farmer's market vendors, about their not being in, uh, patrons because they had, had avoided uh, okay, so they were uh, they attendance. Were, yes, didn't like that. Okay, so they did not. So uh, the the sense that I have is that because there is a walkway there on the north side of Seventy First Street, and that the public street is is should be open for parking. I, I was in um, two different suburbs this weekend. I was in Evanston and I was in um, uh, South Holland near their parks, and the same problem presents itself. And so uh, again, the, the question becomes, uh, do we want to encourage or discourage usership at the park? And there is gonna be a, a minor inconvenience to, to, the, to the residents who live adjacent to the park, that being the case, if, if that becomes the overriding feature of uh, making sure that we're attracting and, and encouraging residents to, to use the park. Mm -hmm. I mean, at a minimum, the, you know, the police could, I know you, you suggested that the Policeman on call for the park, you know, could help monitor at least the restrictions and make sure that they're following. That's that's that. already in place. Mm -hmm. That the 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 restriction based on the, the signage closest to Clarendon Hills Road, that pro prohibition represents a safety issue. So we want to maintain that in place because turning into Clarendon Hills Road or turning off of Clarendon Hills Road onto Seventy First Street yeah. present a problem if the if their car is parked all the way to the corner. But the rest of the parking, I, I don't think we should be enforcing at all. So then for the south side of 71st Street, since they were not allowed to park on the north side last time, were a lot of residents parking that way since, you know, like I mentioned, it's a little weird location because there's, no, uh, there's no gravel, you know, to kind of pull into. It's just grass and then it's the street. So they were parking on the street and not on people's grass? Do you know? They, as near as I could tell, there was no one parking parked on the grass in front of anyone's residences on the south side of the street. You know, there there is a diagonal parking uh, that extends all the way from the uh, almost from the park driveway, all the way back uh, to to the edge of the park. Mm -hmm. So I did not see anybody parking, uh, and didn't get reports of anybody parking on anyone's lawn. Any other communications, Alderman Marquez? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, as Mr. Gombeck knows, uh, I've received uh, a number of communications from residents who uh, are adjacent to the, the creek that runs through uh, our subdivision and, and uh, the golf course. Uh, primarily uh, dead trees, uh, tre uh, garbage building up in the creek, et cetera. 
And uh, it seems like when we try to do something nice, we bring the attention to the fact that we're doing something nice and other people see that. And now they want you to do something nice for them as well. A, week, a couple weeks ago, Dan got a hold of um, John uh, from the county and the county went out and a tree had fallen down in the creek behind Mr. and Mrs. Sadowski's house. They took the tree down but left the stump up and they left a kind of a, a mess in the backyard. They also pulled the silt and everything out of the, the creek deposited on the carriage green side and they cut a number of other trees down really kind of made a mess of it so our communication back and forth uh, has resulted in the fact that we're going to we're going to be involved in some of that repair correct yeah that is correct uh, in terms of reseeding the carriage green side dirt and, and whatever nonetheless what this has done is it brought to, it this was seen by other people who live along that creek who now have dead trees that are hanging over their properties and their concern is if we can get the county out to do it for that one home, why can't we get the county to come out and do it by their home? And, and they have a legitimate concern about that. Uh, Dan and I talked last week on the phone, and, and one of the ideas we came up with was the possibility of getting the county possibly to agree to like a five-year plan where every five years they'll come out and they'll clean up the, the dead brush and they'll clean up or cut down the dead branches from the trees. And Dan's going to try to set something like that up, but um, I'm, I'm receiving a number of calls from people who live on that creek who have that issue. And I don't know, Dan, I know you were off on Friday, but I, have we made any progress with the county on that? No, I was waiting to see what the end result was of the current restoration that we have and see what a partnership uh, between the city and the county, what it develops into. Part of the problem is, is that we have mature, mature, very mature trees throughout this creek. Uh, some are dead, some are slowly dying. Um, so with that said, what is the county's protocol and what is the city's responsibility? Obviously during an emergency, the city has the right to come in there and remove any type of obstructions. Uh, a lot of the, the, the creekway is part of some residents' properties as well. Uh, if you recall, there was a gentleman uh, last year that basically lost an entire bank against the creek and it was about a 25 foot wall and I believe that cost him uh, in excess of $100,000, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Um, so where does the responsibility start and, and stop is something we need to develop. Uh, the, the proper protocol with the county, um, it just has, it's not there. Um, so again, after this restoration, we're gonna sit down and see whose responsibility is what, and we'll get more information back to the uh, committee and or the city council. Isn't there, uh, isn't there a federal uh, protocol for federal waterways for their maintenance of them and wouldn't the county have to uh, abide by those federal rules the answer is yes it's just to what level so if they take a tree down for example are they required to stump it no they're not according to stormwater regulations because they're not disturbing the crown that stump actually in the root system is still holding the ground together which will not cause additional erosion at what point do these stumps become an eyesore um, are they aesthetically pleasing obviously not once you remove the stump now you need to restore it what do you restore it with mm -hmm. um, I see that. that answers the question yeah it's uh it's it's interesting um is that you know we're doing that stormwater study or we're we're getting involved in a um what are they calling that? Uh, we're, we're, oh, we're the you know, the stormwater issue that they're they're trying to get a comprehensive plan within the county. The firm, the firm maps or the floodway, floodway floodplain yeah. maps. Would this fill, fit in with that? The only thing that will do is um, those creeks are identified as tributaries. As far as any type of maintenance goes, the answer is no. Um, the firm maps will basically are being reworked uh, so the state of Illinois has an updated uh, database and again we still so object to what was presented yeah. back to the state well I think they I think after our objections and many uh, do, many mus DuPage municipalities objected I think that's why they've gone to this next step to do a much uh, more thorough um, investigation a much correct. more thorough th survey correct yeah. 
So, okay. Well, I was just hoping that would be part of the plan. No, and, and again, I think it's um, something that the county and us need to be involved with, especially with all the new stormwater regulations that are out there. Okay. Other communications? Alderman Seifert? Just one brief thing. I know we go over this every time about the 75th construction. Oh. And some of the more interesting communications I forwarded to Mr. Gombach. Uh, but one thing that did come up that was a new thing, and I can I actually identify with this, is that you know the lights at Plainfield and at 75th are incredibly short, especially with the construction going on. And I mean, it just seems to me that maybe a longer light might alleviate some of that congestion. You know, from a personal standpoint, I go to Brookhaven three times a week to buy dinner. And I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going to Whole Foods. So really, we're hurting dairy and businesses because it would take a half an hour to get through that intersection. Uh, any thoughts on maybe extending that, the period, the green lights for any amount of time? The answer is yes. And unfortunately, what had happened several weeks ago, lightning had hit one of the controllers, the temporary controllers. It blew out uh, some type of board. So right now, all the lights. Plainfield 75th and Adams also are on a uh, recall. Uh, so a recall basically sets them at the longest setting for the most busiest traffic. So Plainfield Road may have less time than it was than it had, uh, but the part is being manufactured and being brought in uh, should be this week. So I'm hoping to see that that'll be a difference. So I did bring that up to okay. Chad, uh, Omega Construction, and Dave Twork as well of DuPage County. Thanks. Any other communications? Alderman Kenny? I've got a handful tonight, Mayor. Um, Dan, I'm piggyback on Alderman Cypher's um, 75th Street. Got communications this past week from um, Jane Harmon over in Norman Courts regarding the mound of dirt over on 75th Street and what the county is or is not doing it and her frustration with it. Can you kind of maybe help elaborate on that? Right. Uh, on the uh, south side of 75th Street, there's currently what's referred to as a stockpile. That stockpile, again, is approved by DuPage County to be placed in that section to be spread after the construction, the roadways are completed and respread. During that time, that stockpile, there's uh, they basically have to to uh, topsoil it, which is topsoil, first of all, and they have to put seed on it as well as uh, some type of fertilizer. So what do we see today there? We see lots of tall grasses and what's considered weeds. Um, are they noxious weeds? The answer is no. Do they violate our ordinance? The answer is yes. Uh, from another perspective, you know, again, that was brought up to the county and uh, uh, the county came back with an answer that it satisfies the uh, Stormwater Compliance Act, in which case it does. It stabilizes that mound of dirt from being washed into the storm sewer system, period. Um, you know, is that typical for construction sites? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. Uh, how much authority do we have over there? Um, it's 75th Street, it's DuPage County jurisdiction. Um, we're out of opportunities, I guess, to go back out there and have the contractor literally mow it. Number one, it's how do you mow it? Uh, if you mow it by hand, there's still issues. Call it some safety issues, because those, those hills are pretty steep. Um, so we have limited enforcement on that uh, portion of it. Do you, would you foresee uh, residents home flooding if the county didn't take the measures that they've taken with the seeding and the fertilizer, if the dirt did get into the storm source? The answer is yes. Okay. Um, when I say when you say flooding, there would be erosion, and that erosion would bleed over onto residents' properties and not necessarily flooding of structures, but it would be a mess. So it's a mess to look at, but at least their, their sewers are dry is what we're looking at long term. Correct. Okay, two more on a... Um, Mayor, I sent you an email today. Uh, Beth Tischler over on Whittier Drive. Her students are got some award for cancer stoppers or cancer smashers. And then uh, Ralph Lodato, um, 1500 block of 71st Street. Um, Chief, you got CC'd on the email today, speeding going down 71st Street. I do know that I've seen um, Cook, or Cook County, DuPage County sheriffs are in that subdivision covering, and they're, they're hitting different spots. Um, 
down Holly, down Claremont, down 71st in Washington. So to, I, don't, I don't know, maybe you can talk to the county and get together or something. But um, and I and I was out there talking to, uh, to the resident, and they they do have speed bumps, and it was sunny afternoon, and they're just pff, right right over. Okay. We initiated a traffic mission right. from Darien anyway, so uh, we'll work okay. with them as well. Yeah, okay. and the, the cancer smashers, I forwarded to Brian so we can follow up for uh, get that that group of uh, Darien residents in, in for awards. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Any other communications? And let's move on to the mayor's report. And I do not have a report. Let's move to the city clerk's report. Just one item, Madam Mayor. Um, meet and greet will take place with the mayor on Monday, August the 18th at 6 p.m. here in the city hall upstairs conference room. Thank you. Uh, Depart uh, city administrators. Report. No report, Mayor. Thank okay. you. Let's move on to the department heads uh, reports. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Give me a second to set up here. So we're not talking about streets and ditches? No. Okay, not. everybody take a oh, breath. Oops. <laughs> we ditched the ditches. Just as a recap, uh, recently uh, we received um, the rendering from uh, one of the architects, um, and we received it since the shop drawings were completed, now gave us the opportunity to come back and present the architectural view of it. Just to kind of go over it again in a nutshell for the viewing residents at home as well, um, this is the clock tower. The basic design of it is various poles, uh, I'll call it pole construction for simplicity here, uh, running from 6 inch, 10 inch, up to 12 inch. These circles in here are actually tubed uh, pieces of steel that, have, that are in a tube form. Uh, the clocks themselves. Again, it, it's a rendering. Uh, those are three six-foot clocks. The shape of this is a triangle. The clocks, again, would be on the uh, south side, on the north side, and somewhat on the east side, or west side, I should say, approach of west side. On the bottom here, we have the fountain itself. The fountain itself, again, was depicting uh, basically like three larger types of logs that have the water that would just spray over, spray over it. Nothing that's going to be going up, you know, five, ten foot high, for example. Uh, in conjunction with that is the flower, called a flower planter area, right outside the fountain. As we get right outside the fountain, this area right here is a fence. <laughs> Save the clock tower. <laughs> Um, this area right here is the bench seat, and again, that's all pavers. Um, it's, it's a long-term uh, bench. It'll never disintegrate. Along here is the brick pavers. Again, the goal of the brick pavers was to put a program in place. We'll refer to it as a buy a brick program. And one of the thought processes was to be able to count the amount of bricks. I'm trying to get that information. I wasn't able to get it today. Uh, but actually get the amount of bricks and then put a cost to it to see what a possible return on investment <clears throat> could be. The bench seats are in here for attraction at this point. They're not included in this project. Again, that's something for later on. One portion that I want to make sure we discuss is the water fountain. This was, uh, it's not referred to as any type of splash pool, so I want to make sure that everyone uh, understands that portion of it. It is basically a water fountain. On this water fountain itself is a type of, I'll call refer to it as a pipe, that has a mister on it. That mister you have to turn on and off manually. So if someone's riding their bike, for example, they want to stop, have a drink of water, cool off on a hot day, it'll give them that opportunity basically to cool it off, to cool themselves off. Landscaping, there's various landscaping, a lot of color throughout the entire corner, as well as there's going to be berms in here. So there'll be some low rolling hills, if you want to say, it will have the opportunity to have uh, perennials, annuals, whatever the case is. One of the thought processes that recently came up was the sign. The Chase sign was designa is designated to be on the corner. Um, we reached out to... Uh, DSR, who's the general contractor of Chase, and asked them to look at revisiting on moving the sign. Please recall, by agreement, 
uh, Chase is allowed to put that sign there, which would also serve our or serve the developers uh, businesses to advertise. What we're asking Chase to do is Again, what we're asking Chase to do is to take their sign and move it to the north. And as you look at the corner, kitty corner, this sign would not basically be, I won't say the focal point, but you'll see more of the uh, actual tower and all its amenities within there. Also, staff uh, had some conversation about this today, and we, we looked at a possible Christmas tree, a new Christmas tree site, because it's the one at Lace is getting bigger and with the DuPage County traffic, uh, the proposed lane, it may be difficult to be decorating that in the future, because right now, keep in mind that we have to get a high lift over there. So again, that was just something that staff had a conversation about, so we threw a, a tree in there. We modified the draw a little bit. Like I said, we're currently working with Jeff Mecklin, who's the Chase representative. I did have a preliminary conversation with him today. He was not very excited about moving the sign. Uh, that's number one. Um, so we're still uh, told him to look at the draw, this rendering, which we presented to him. So we'll be having further discussions uh, with him. One of the um, solutions or alternatives maybe is that they have the opportunity to put a sign here as well as on this end. Again, it's all very preliminary, so we're going to go back and try to renegotiate uh, all those items. We'll bring that back to City Council if anything needs to be brought back to City Council. Um, so if there's any questions on the rendering itself, and for the audience, I'll turn it around. I understand you don't see this right now, so uh, but I'll make sure I turn it around here. Well, uh, Dan, where would the Deering Point sign be in regards to this? There is no specific point, point for Darien Point sign, um, whether it'll be on a building somewhere. That's a potential. Can it still be incorporated onto the chase sign? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we haven't given that a lot of thought process. Uh, we didn't want, and basically the reason we didn't is we didn't want to cloud up anything more than we have to. The Darien Point was just, you know, the internal develop, internal name of the development for all intents and purposes. But it is a good point, and you know that's something else we'll bring up to uh, the sign company when they provide us the renderings for it. When you talked to Jeff, you only brought up the north side, of the, uh, placing the sign at the north side. You did not bring up, I suggested, putting it back to, uh, at the driveway. I'm sorry, we did it at the driveway, you mean on the north, northern or the eastern? No, at the, on the, the, east, the, east, the eastern driveway on Plainfield Road. No. We uh, wanted to provide one more option, and that option is on a smaller piece of paper, correct? No, just I, I'm suggesting one sign, take away that north north side, right. and only put one sign next to the driveway with our business's names on it, too. So, I mean, another su suggestion. Right, and that's what we gave them was two options on the one. Uh, so, you know, we'll definitely stay in negotiations and contact with them. I'd rather not have two signs on that property. Understood. Well, Dan, you're saying you're showing one now to the north of the clock tower, but as an option, you could take that and relocate it. You're not suggesting two signs? They, it was, he was, I was suggesting two, two signs, signs okay. and that was through a preliminary conversation with Jeff Mecklin. And again, there's, there's been no um, real hard issue yet at this point, so we still need to determine if they'll move it, where they'll move it. Um, and the two options are either A, B or A and B. I don't like A and B. I like A or B. I don't want them to have both signs. Understood. Okay. Alderman Belzec? When, uh, when Chase first wanted this sign, wasn't the purpose to uh, give people on Plainfield, driving on Plainfield Road, the knowledge that Chase is there? So it would seem to me that what you just referred to as B wouldn't serve that purpose and a would uh, make a lot more sense, especially if someone's driving on Plainfield Road, sees that sign, and can turn in right mm -hmm. there. That would That's be, it would correct. solve the same thing. In fact, it probably would be better than being in, uh, on the actual yeah. point. And That's correct. We just, again, put that together and, you know, yeah. just probably should have put one there or put A or B on there 
as a uh, resort. Not A and B, A or B. A or B, I said. And right. Dan, yeah. I don't know if you recall offhand, they have some directional signing that was approved with the project. I have to, right, I have to okay. double check, and I believe there was small directional signage which gave oh. arrow signs for Chase. Okay. I have to double check mm -hmm. that. Okay. If there's no other uh, questions. Any other questions I, for, uh, for Dan? <clears throat> We'll put this up on the lobby as well for residents to view. Okay. Uh, next thing I want to bring up, a little uh, show and tell. I'm not sure if uh, a lot of you have ever seen Water Main, um, the actual product that delivers water to your home. And this is from Plainfield Road. And the reason I'm bringing this forth is uh, we may have a little more work to do on Plainfield Road with the Water Main. Uh, our staff is going to be conducting an additional uh, um, pothole excavations. Uh, to determine the condition of pipe. But I'm going to pass this around. I got some uh, paper towels. Now it makes sense. Now, now <laughs> keep in mind, this is dry. This is not what the guys are used to working. So what I'll do is I'll pass the paper towels around first. This is the condition that the pipe was in? Right. And I'm going to pass around one piece of pipe here. And I'm going to hold on to the other piece. So this is from an uh, eight-inch water main. As it comes around, you're going to see a hole in here, just like I have a hole in this one. Part of the Plainfield Road project was for the valve to be tied on to this piece of water main. They're going to have paper towels on it. Okay. Now, in order to hold this valve onto this piece of water main, there's what they call a retainer glands. That retainer gland goes around this main and they tighten down bolts. The bolts are designed to snap when they reach the torque, the proper torque. As the contractor was putting these bolts in, tightening them up, this is what happened. You'll see a hole on yours, mm -hmm. the one that's going around currently, mm -hmm. and you'll see a hole on this one. What you'll also notice is the scaling, the scaling on the pipe, uh, and as it comes around, you'll see it better. That scaling is basically a piece of pipe that's ready to break. Will it be a longitudinal break, or will it be a circumference break? We don't know. The last one, if you recall, we had on Plainfield, uh, probably a year and a half, two years ago, shut down the northbound, uh, northbound Cass Avenue at Plainfield Road. And that was a horizontal split, which we had to replace the water main. So in a nutshell, what I'm you know, showing you is a piece of cast iron water main that's not used anymore. And this is approximately 40, 45 years old. Um, on the inside of it, what you can see is uh, you'll see some scaling as well. But there's also a white residue that's in there. That white residue is basically from DuPage Water Commission as they feed some of the uh, polyphosphates in there uh, to help control, uh, not radium, the solder in homes. Um, so again, that's something else that you see in there. Uh, but and if there's any questions on it, I could probably talk a little more about pipes, but I'm sure no one wants to listen to me talk about pipes here all night. Dan, we're, you know, since you're showing how dirty those water pipes are, what happens to that water? Is that the water that's going to residents' homes? Or is that water going through a treatment system before it goes into residents' homes? Obviously, this pipe has already been pulled out. As soon as it's pulled out of the ground, it begins to oxidize. It's a lot cleaner once it comes apart. You'll see a white residue, which I think you see it better on that one. That white residue is basically a, a coating. We'll call it a protective coating, if you want to say, for safe potable water. Um, and there's enough pressure in our water main. There always is enough pressure on our water main that when and if a hole or it ruptures, water comes out of there. Thus, the you know presence of a water main break. Um, but again, you know this is. A condition of pipe where you just don't know without having a separate metallurgist come in and evaluate maybe every 30, 40 feet of water main and see what you need to replace, which again will be very costly. Um, so the point is that you never know how much water main you really need to replace. That's why we take a look at water, water main breaks and try to uh, base them on if you have five or more water breaks within, I call it a block that you should be, you know, begin to replace it. And this is probably the worst water main uh, 
that we've uh, encountered, and we might have to have an additional uh, amount of work that needs to be removed and replaced, and we're going to either do it internally um, or we're going to have a different uh, uh, vendor come and do this because right now we're out of the, uh, it's in a better area to work, and we don't need to hire DuPage County or their vendor to do it for us, plus they're limited on time. Uh, Dan, as we discussed, uh, they don't even allow that kind of piping anymore. All the concrete uh, piping that you see sitting on the side of the road out there now, that's going to be uh, the, the piping that they put in. There's a combination of it, and by today's standards, there's so many different types of pipe, whether it's, uh, uh, especially for water, uh, ductile iron, um, ductile iron is the most preferred. It also is a concrete casing uh, pipe, which DuPage Water Commission, if you remember when DuPage Water Commission was coming through town, those were the larger pipes. Those are uh, special concrete pipes uh, lined with uh, additional material. And there's also plastic, but plastic is, is I won't say forgiven. Plastic is only for very corrosive ground. When you, when you do put metal in certain portions of ground, uh, the corrosive action between the two will basically deteriorate the pipe. That's not the case here. This is just age and it is cast iron. Uh, Dan, I'm sorry, did you mention the location where you pulled the pipe? Uh, this is from the Plainfield Road site, Okay, yes. because again, maybe maybe for the residents, the, part of the um, benefit of doing the program now was because DuPage Water, uh, I'm sorry, for DuPage County had torn up, you know, the street. So maybe you could comment again right. the timing of this because it was obviously this is the best time to do that. And for the residents, again, at home who have been inconvenienced on Plainfield Road, especially for uh, eastbound traffic right at Cass, um, that was, or excuse me, westbound traffic uh, immediately east of Cass, uh, that was due to the city of Darien. What we did is we uh, partnered up with the county on their contract as part of this overall project to include a certain amount of water main and water main infrastructure improvements. And again, the goal was that we knew the condition of the pipe, especially in a specific location. We knew that this was the time to do it, plus the depth of this water main is approximately 10 to 12 feet deep. So if we were just basically to forego this and not do anything, uh, especially with the heavy equipment that, kind of, that is on this water main right now, uh, would have probably caused an additional water main break, which would have... Uh, uh, been a reactive approach versus being proactive and budgeting for it. Uh, unfortunately, did we budget enough? No, we should have gone further. Again, that's one of those things that we just don't see and we can't see under the ground. So, uh, but the traffic jam should all be um, fixed. And there should be no more traffic jams, number one, especially on Plainfield Road. And the county will also be resurfacing Plainfield, route, Plainfield Road from 75th Street up to Brookhaven. Um, so again, that's at their dime, so we were able to realize some cost savings of the overall project versus the city taking on full costs. Any other questions for Dan? Uh, Chief, did you have a, a report? Okay, no report there. And whoever wants this other piece can take it for a uh, paperweight if they'd like. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's not exactly like uh, the towers in New York or anything. Let's move on to the treasurer's report. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I guess before I request uh, approval of this warrant tonight, uh, based on our work session tonight, though, I have a quest do have a question for Dan. One of the items that we're approving in the warrant tonight, Dan, is the uh, payment of the bill to Shive Hattery for $3,526. If I'm not mistaken, during the work session, we were talking about not paying for anything in connection with the mix-up in terms of the special footings in that that need to be done. I just wanted to make sure that this invoice was not related to that, and we're talking about something to follow up later. There is no additional invoicing. This invoice, uh, we should have had the report today. Uh, <clears throat> I expect to have the full report tomorrow, which again, we're gonna hold on to the check uh, as far, you know, before releasing it. So This just, check? Yes, this it's check. just a matter of that report being forwarded to us. I understand the drawings are done, um, so. That's why we had approved it. So you're saying that that check will be released when you receive the report? Correct. We should, again, but it should be tomorrow. We should have had it, uh, I believe it was Friday. I took off Friday, so I was not able to follow up with them. And at the end, I think Shive uh, originally asked for an additional compensation above and beyond this. Yes. And that is not 
So this covers previous. It's not covering anything uh, else. Yes, it does cover That's, previous yeah. as well. Yes. All right. Go ahead. Question is okay. In that case, I'm requesting okay. council's approval of warrant number fourteen fifteen oh six in the amount of two hundred fifteen thousand five hundred thirty three dollars and two cents from the listed funds, as well as payroll for the period ended July twenty fourth in the amount of two hundred fifty two thousand three hundred thirty five dollars and one cent for a total to be approved of four hundred sixty seven thousand eight hundred sixty eight dollars and three cents. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Belzec, seconded by Alderman Seifert. Discussion? Just one quick question. Dan, I probably should have asked you during uh, your report, and forgive me. Um, on the warrant tonight, there's uh, $20,782.50 to Homer. How many trees did we actually cut down on that, do you recall? I can't tell you how many trees. I know it all goes by diameter, by height, but the location, so okay. um, I, I'd have to take it. I know the bill does say it. Uh, we can count the locations if you'd like. I just thought residents might be interested how many trees you know were cut at that, at that cost. It's... It's 692.75 Inch inches. diameter by height, which diameter is basically inches. inches. And there's all the locations around there as well. Um, so I don't have the counts. And the deta detail, it's approximately, I'm guessing approximately 30 to 35 trees eyeballing there. I was guessing that, okay. All right, thank you. I had a resident uh, uh, call me regarding ash trees that they've, they've identified, I believe it was, um, Bigger court, and you and I discussed that. And you, there's a dotting system on the ash trees as to whether they're going to be taken down or you're, it's a wait and see. How does that how how does that system work? Yeah, and what we've done is we've gone through and re-inventoried all the trees that we have treated with the tree ice product. Um, with that said, the trees that were uh, had a designated red mark. I want to be careful as I advertise that a red mark. We'll see red marks all over the place tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> Special paint. <laughs> tomorrow we're going to change the colors of the paint, but uh, uh, the red des designates to our vendor that the tree is coming down along with the list. So there is a, a little bit of a foolproof system where besides the red dot, the address has to correlate to it. Um, in conjunction with that, the other dot is a, uh, a purple dot, um, which was a wait and see. That wait and see is basically telling us that it's showing signs of life, and that sign of life is basically new growth, besides on the bottom, up on top as well. Um, what are we gonna do with that growth that we currently see on the bottom? I think we're gonna be addressing that with our upcoming tree trimming program. Um, also, we need to determine whether or not uh, we should be trimming that right away. Uh, again, it does look, uh, not, not aesthetically pleasing, put it that way. Um, but there is, uh, you know, a good sign of growth. I was driving through one of the subdivisions today looking through something. And I don't know if anybody realizes some of the canopies that are, have been developed in some of the uh, local residential neighborhoods. And I see other towns that are just basically taking these trees down without any consideration. And I'm very proud to say that I'm glad that Darian didn't take that approach because like, you see some of the canopies today and, and it's just, you know, it, it's, you know it's, it's so valuable. Yeah, I know the town, the town of Wheaton is taking them all down. Yes. And I can say we have a large, very mature ash tree in our backyard that we treated twice. So twice in four years, and it doesn't have any sign of any kind of disease. And we're surrounded. So that treatment, and, and we did triage last year as well. And so, you know, not, I don't want to jinx myself, but it's a, it's a huge tree. I'd hate to lose it, but... Yeah. Right now, it's looking healthy. And if you think about it, that was one of the benefits of changing the parade route down to 71st Street. It was how beautiful it had all the, all the trees right down there. So, yeah. Yeah, that was a good point. I did notice that after uh, somebody did mention that, it's just amazing how much uh, energy it saves mature. as well. Mm -hmm. So hats off to you, Dan. Good, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hats off to ourselves. We agreed with it and did not take down, spend yes. all that money to take down all those trees. Yes. Uh, Let's, okay, we, so we the warrant, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're still on the warrant. Any other questions on the warrant? Then the roll, please. Belzac? Aye. Seifert? Aye. Shower? Aye. McIver? Aye. Marquez? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Belke? Aye. Seven eyes. The warrant has been approved. I think the treasurer has the uh, pol yes. uh, police pension 
report. Uh, well, just one comment. We did have our second quarterly report at the police for the police pension fund last Wednesday, and the two investment managers each managing about $11 million of our total $23 million in the fund. And for the quarter from April 1st through June 30th, uh, one of the uh, money managers had a return of 3.17% for the quarter and the other 2.76%. So a very good return for the quarter. Unfortunately, as we all know, last week, July turned into a negative month, which happened subsequent to this period of time. But at least we have a, a pretty good start, I think, to the beginning of our fiscal year. Uh, also this evening, just before uh, the council meeting, uh, I did receive the uh, actuarial report, which I'm going to provide to staff and get on the agenda for the next uh, finance committee meeting. So I'll review all the details on that. Okay. Thank you. Let's move to standing committee reports. Alderman Marquez. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. The Municipal Services Committee approved the minutes of the June 23rd, 2014 Municipal Services Committee meeting and submitted those to the clerk's office. And the next meeting of the Municipal Services Committee will be August 25th, 2014 at 6.30 here in the council chambers. And I believe, uh, did you, Alderman uh, Does Shower, not matter. You, did you have your name, yeah, your hands? Sure. Yeah, your hand. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The minutes of the April and July admin finance meeting have been signed and submitted to the clerk's office. And our next admin finance meeting will be held on Tuesday, September 2nd, 2014, in our upstairs meeting room at 6 p.m. Thank you. Alderman McIver. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Our next meeting of the police committee is scheduled for Monday, August 18th at 6 p.m. in the police department training room. Hopefully I'll get there in time. Um, but uh, and we do have an agenda, so that, that meeting is confirmed. Very good. Let's move to questions, comments, agenda related. I don't know if any of the aldermen still have any questions on any of the items on the agenda. Uh, Alderman McIver. I don't have a question, but since we're uh, on camera now, I do have a comment. Um, we have this uh, item for the Darien Point development that's under our old business agenda. And um, as much as, you know, I'm very, you know, I am not, um, supporting a clock tower per se at that corner. Um, obviously we have to uh, move forward with the development and some of these things that come up as a result of unforeseen conditions. But for the record and for the residents that have contacted me, um, you know, that ship has sailed uh, as far as the clock tower goes. But um, I, you know, they're two independent items as far as I'm concerned, so. Uh, any, any other com comments, Alderman Belke? Yeah, on the consent agenda D, I would like to have Dan maybe give a broad overview, particularly what the residents that are affected will be getting. Will they be getting a letter or will they be getting um, a flyer on their door, the timing perhaps? And then also if you can just expand upon their options for that FEMA certificate or that LOMA, that letter of MAP amendment. Uh, two different issues. Uh, number one on, on D, uh, we want to uh, go to E. I think you meant E, correct? D and E? D? Oh. No, D. no, no she D. meant D. Yeah, D. D, I'm sorry, okay. That's the, the watershed. The watershed, but also you were talking about the EPA for... The residents no. get a chance to, no. for that dollar amount to revise their loan. After, after, after the right, water modeling is done. Was, okay. On that one, again, what it is is a letter of MAP amendment or map revision referred to as a LOMA or LOMAR gives a resident that's currently within a floodplain an opportunity to have this survey completed in which case we'll determine whether or not their primary structure which is the house not the garage um, not the shed again only the house whether or not it should be included in the floodplain. If it's included in the floodplain, residents are required, well, I should say required, residents that have mortgages are required to have um, flood insurance. Now, it's my understanding that flood insurance can be fairly costly uh, in the vicinity of $1,000. Again, I don't have all that as a hard fact, but uh, uh, I believe Alderman Seifer might be able to comment on that as well. Uh, but again, it gives residents the opportunity to have their structures removed through what's referred to as the LOMA, LOMA which is a letter of map amendment and a letter of map revision. Uh, so the surveyors will be completing this if residents requested at a cost of $850. 
in conjunction with that, they should, once they get that survey in hand, they then turn it over if they have the ability to complete it. Uh, they can complete it. Also, I believe that an engineer has to seal that. Uh, it's a piece of paper basically stating that uh, uh, they are out of the uh, flood uh, floodway, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so we'll be more than happy to work with residents on a sample sheet when the project, the project, uh, if approved, will uh, uh, commence sometime in September, uh, late September, early October, and it. The reason behind that is so the vegetation, most of the vegetation is gone for the surveyors so they could see clear, uh, clear sites. Uh, does that answer the question there? It, and except, will they be getting a letter that details all this? Yes, the answer is yes. Once we know that the project is approximately two weeks out, we'll be forwarding uh, hand flyers uh, to all the residents that are adjacent to all parts of the creek. Just to add a little comment, um, the cost of the flood insurance really depends on what flood plane you're in, but the minimum is about $1,200 for the year. Um, and then for the LOMA finding, aside from the topographical survey that you need to submit, you also need to submit the FEMA fee, which is a, it's $400. So you're looking roughly at, and again, we're not saying whether 850 is is a, the best deal or not, right. but roughly you're looking at twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 to submit. One thing, and then maybe the surveyor can then comment on this. I know a couple LOMA applications I've done just in the last few months have been rejected simply. And the reasoning from FEMA was that because the county is revisiting the maps. So, you know, catch I mean, 22. I'm, Caught in a catch yeah, 22. I don't know if I want, I mean, I can't comment whether or not somebody should, but I think everybody should give it a try, but I'm not sure right now is the best time to give it a try, mm -hmm. like right. you and I have talked about. Yes, yes. And the beauty of it is, uh, for what uh, Alderman Seifer referred to was uh, the county is currently working with the state of Illinois on recertifying or updating the firm panel maps. The firm panel maps are basically, there's uh, I believe five uh, various types of maps that cover the different types of watersheds and have certain zones uh, within those maps that determine uh, what type of flood, what flood zone you are in. I think mine used to be 1,200 and then they changed last time they redrew the maps. I think it was 06, maybe? Oh, six oh, four, or oh, 06, something like that. I got thrown into a different, because in my corner there, there's three different floodplains, and all of a sudden it was supposed to be about 4,600 for the year. So uh, it, it can be pretty costly if you have to carry that. Yeah. And like you said, the Loma finding just takes the structure out of having floodplain re flood insurance requirements. Which is a big savings at the end of the day. And as a matter of fact, uh, uh, adjacent to your home, if we would have approved or agreed with the county, uh, they, their study, I'm not sure how, had basically said there'd be a seven foot wall of water that will be rolling down your block in a hundred year of rain event. So I think we all know that's pretty erroneous. So right. uh, there were several, uh, several areas similar to that. And then one final comment, because it comes up all the time, the reference to hundred year rain event or 50 year rain event, it's not that it happens once every hundred years. It's that out of every 100 rainfalls, it, it will occur once. Because residents and clients will always tell me we've had five 100-year 100, 100 rain events in the last three years. But it's because every 100 rainfalls, this is what's going to happen, not 100 years. Right, it's a 1% chance, basically. Right. Uh, Alderman Kenny? And I'm just going to say one thing. Um, on our old business, backing, um, piggybacking on Alderman MacGyver, um, I understand the importance of this item, that it can't go forward. I also understand that we've talked about today about buying bricks for this clock tower, but yet we don't know what a return on investment is. If there was any other item on this agenda that we didn't know what our return on investment was, we'd probably be, all, we'd be voting no on it. Um, I want to see a clock tower there. I just wanted to see some, some a little due diligence, a little time passes so we knew exactly what we were getting into. Um, we were supposed to have item A only be 125. It first was going to be up to two hundred thousand dollars. Then it was up to one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Now it's back to two hundred thousand dollars. We're playing ping pong with this. Um, I just think it's it needs to be said that we have to take a look at what our return on investment is on future projects before we make before we spend one hundred sixty-three thousand dollars of our taxpayers' dollar. That's it. Dan, from this breakout. 
really the majority of this cost is under the buildings themselves and not the clock tower. So what percent does this affect the actual clock, clock tower? I'm is it under the contingency amount? Referring because to you have the north building at 75 grand, you have the south at 75 grand, you have the parking lot at 12. None of these affect the part the actual clock tower yet. The answer is so no, and none will. No. Okay. That's how I'm kind of treating it. It's it's kind of a separate thing. Um, it, you know, to to actually redevelop this property, this is something that would be an expense anyway, regardless. You know who's there. That's kind and of I I'm don't dis that. and I don't disagree with you in in the least. That just there's something about this process that I don't like how it went down, period. If there's no further comments, let's move to uh, item uh, under, let's move to old business. And there's one item. It's a, uh, item A is a motion to authorize an increase to the purchase pr uh, price credit from 125,000 to an amount not to exceed $200,000 to account for extraordinary costs relating to substandard soil conditions at the Darien Point project. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Schauer, seconded by Alderman Seifert. Discussion? I think we've had some discussion, so I think we can move right on if that's all right with everyone. All right. The roll, please. Schauer? Aye. Seifert? Aye. Belke? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Kenny? No. Marquez? Aye. McIver? Aye. Six ayes and one nay. The item has been approved. Let's move to the consent agenda. And we have uh, uh, five items on the consent agenda that I'd like to, uh, to read for the viewing audience. Item A is a motion to approve an ordinance approving a variation to the Darien zo Zoning Ordinance uh, for 1910 McAdam Road. And the next item is a motion to approve an ordinance granting a minor amendment to an approved plan unit development in Brookhaven Plaza. Uh, it's going to be a, a business called Work Any Work Out Any Time. It will be taking a, a major portion of the uh, the old True Value hardware location. Uh, item C is a motion to approve a resolution approving the public improvements subject to maintenance, uh, which is our Walmart expansion at uh, the Darien Town Center resubdivision. The next item is a motion to approve a resolution authorizing the mayor to accept a proposal from Christopher Burke Engineering in an amount not to exceed $50,000 for the surveying, engineering, and water modeling study of the open ditch and stormwater conveyance system, uh, which is described as Sawmill Creek East and West Leg. Next item is a motion to approve an ordinance prohibiting the use of groundwater as a potable water supply by the installation of or use of potable water supply wells or by any other method within a certain area in the city of Darien, um, which is amending Title 6C of our water division by, re by repealing, ch repealing Chapter 5 and adding new Chapter 5 regulations of potable water supply wells in a designated area of the city of Darien. Do I have a motion to approve all the items? Alderman Marquez, seconded by Alderman Seifert. The roll, please. Marquez? Aye. Seifert? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Belke? Aye. Shower? Aye. McIver? Aye. Seven ayes. All items have been approved. And uh, let's move to new business. And there being no new business, we can move to questions, comments, and announcements of a general nature uh, from the Alderman first. Is there any announcements uh, to be made? Then I'd like to open it up to the audience if anyone would like to address the City Council on any item. We have a Boy Scout with us this evening. Are you just observing uh, for a medal or for a merit badge? And your, what is your name? Uh, Joshua Lancaster. Jo Joshua Lancaster? Welcome. Welcome. How did, how did we do? <laughs> Thank you. Joshua, last Boy Scouts were here did the same thing you did. I asked him the same question. I'm going to ask you. What you learn tonight? No pressure. <laughs> you have 12 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's a, there's a certain protocol that we have to follow by law. <laughs> In order to do our business, so uh, that is uh, that is probably the biggest oh, piece of what we do up here. So, 
<laughs> Welcome, and thank you for joining if us. that wasn't a poetic answer to me, have a nice day. <laughs> 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 that was a good answer. Uh, yeah, he got you. <laughs> Uh, well, with that being said, do I have a motion to adjourn? Alderman McIver, second of Alderman Belke. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Turning the mics off. I'm going to have some questions on this um, audit. She's probably not watching it. Quick.